are trucks that are involved for the Florida Department of Transportation. They're building roads. They're doing normal work that they're supposed to do. That was paused. All those resources were surged, mostly to Pinellas, but also to the barrier islands of Manatee and Sarasota. And in about a 72-hour period, they were able, our state guys were able to do 2,200 truckloads of debris from Pinellas County uh, barrier islands. And that's over 40,000 cubic yards of debris that was removed. And I don't think there's ever been that much debris removed in such a short period of time. So I want to thank those folks from those state agencies. We also had some of our road contractors who, because the storm was coming, they were probably going to have to stop road building anyways. And so we transitioned them to help with the debris. So it was really a team effort. But those guys did. We had shifts working round the clock. And you had in the wee hours of the morning, as Milton was uh, expected to make landfall later that day, you still had this debris operation going. So that made a huge difference, and it definitely mitigated some of the damages. Uh, we also immediately started doing cut and toss operations as soon as it was safe. Uh, 12,000 miles of state roads have been cleared, and that's 96% complete. Um, and in less than 12 hours, 158 bridge inspectors have conducted nearly 2,000 bridge inspections across the impacted areas. I-4, I-75, I-95, and Alligator Alley are cleared and open. Sunshine Skyway, Gandhi, Howard Franklin, Courtney Campbell have been inspected, cleared, and are open. Uh, commercial airports, Daytona, Lakeland, Melbourne, Orlando, Sanford, Palm Beach, Punta Gorda, Southwest Florida, Tampa International, and Vero Beach are all open. Uh, Sarasota Bradenton is expected to reopen at 0600 tomorrow. And St. Pete Clearwater Airport is, supposed to, is expected to resume uh, today at 1600. We are helping them with pumps uh, to send so that they're able to get up online later this afternoon. Port Tampa Bay and Port, uh, Seaport Manatee have reopened uh, with some restrictions. Channel assessments are currently underway at both of them, and I know Kevin is, is working with the utilities and the port, uh, particularly in Tampa, to, to, to get the power restored so that they can resume full operations. Uh, port Canaveral and Jacksport are both open. Landslide are expected to open waterside later today. Uh, 19 school districts that were closed yesterday have reopened today. Uh, there are at least uh, seven other school districts opening on Monday, and I bet you you will hear more districts announce reopenings uh, for Monday, uh, given, thankfully, I think most of them uh, had either no or very minimal damage. Four, for parents who want information on your school district, you can go to fldoe.org slash storm info. That's the Florida Department of Education website, fldoe.org slash storm info. Fatalities. Now, we had five fatalities with that tornado in St. Lucie, and that's a very tragic thing. Uh, I don't think that th these are things with the tornadoes, they come, it is very hard to prepare. You gotta just take cover and hope for the best. Uh, so we, we have had fatalities of that nature. But what we are also seeing is we're now in the period where you have fatalities that are preventable. We have had fatalities because of interaction with downed power lines and water. Uh, we are seeing uh, hazards that are still there. So please uh, exercise caution. Don't wade into floodwaters. Uh, be, be careful with how you're using ladders. Use generators properly. Make sure it's outside your home. Don't run that generator inside. So we are now in the situation where everything has been stabilized. Uh, and so you have to make the, the proper decisions and just know that there are still some hazards out there. We see debris, probably not as much debris, quite frankly, as I anticipated 48 hours ago when you were looking at what the storm was doing, but you have a lot of debris. If you have debris interacting with power lines, don't, don't mess with it. Uh, people will come and be able uh, to, get that, to get that handled. Uh, so, so please uh, exercise caution. If you need assistance, with things like helping with your house, we have all the organizations that are now descending on Florida again. Uh, they're all um, part of the Activate Hope mission through the Division of Emergency Management in Hope, Florida. We have a 24-hour hotline 
1-833-GET-HOPE, 1-833-GET-HOPE. If you have needs, chances are we're going to have an organization, not even government, private organization, that can go and help you, uh, particularly when you're talking about maybe damage to your home uh, or property. We've got folks that can come and help mitigate that for you. So please utilize the Hope Florida line uh, for that. If people need temporary shelter, we still have Visit Florida's emergency accommodation modules and Expedia and Priceline available. Uh, we also have, um, uh, through Hope Florida, if you have shelter needs, you can call Hope Florida, uh, and they can work with their partners to see uh, what's available. Uh, we will have the Hope Florida bus located at the following places today, in Sarasota at New College of Florida, from 12 to 5 p.m. In Lee County, Hope Bus will be at Summit Church, 19601 Ben Hill Griffin Parkway in Fort Myers from 12 to 5. Charlotte County, Murdoch Baptist Church in Port Charlotte, 12 to 5, you will have the Hope Bus, and that will likely be in other counties in the ensuing days. If you have business damage, you can report your business damage on our business survey at floridadisaster.biz, floridadisaster.biz. We've also activated additional money for no interest loans for businesses who may need a cash infusion. So we have an additional $50 million on top of what we did for Hurricane Helene. Uh, normal businesses are eligible for up to 50,000 up to 100,000 for agriculture and aquaculture, and up to 150,000 for citrus and for cattle. Uh, and again, these are zero interest loans, very flexible repayment options. You know, say we put aside money in Florida, we got a massive rainy day fund, massive surplus, uh, and so we understand there's contingencies. So we want to work with people. Uh, we're not going to be beating down your door tomorrow to say pay us back the money. We'll get it eventually, but we understand these are difficult times. And we are already starting having applications come in for Milton. We had a lot come in for Helene as well. So if you want to apply for one of those emergency bridge loans, you go to floridajobs.org slash EBL, floridajobs.org slash EBL. Uh, we've also activated the Florida Disaster Fund, where people can make tax-deductible charitable contributions so that this can be deployed to help people in need. That's floridadisasterfund.org, floridadisasterfund.org. We raised, uh, we distributed, raised and distributed $63 million after Hurricane Ian. Now, this storm with Milton did not do, uh, thankfully, the, the level of damage that Ian did, but there are going to be a lot of needs. Uh, we've had a lot of major companies step up and make significant contributions, and I know we've had a lot of individuals make smaller contributions as they can afford, and we thank you for that, and 100% of that money goes to helping people that are in need. I want to thank everybody for their hard work. This has been now going on uh, for weeks where we've been on this emergency footing. I know people have been working around the clock. Just when you started getting a little bit of normalcy after Helene, when things started to maybe stabilize, you turned around and had to deal with this other uh, uh, menacing storm, Hurricane Milton. Uh, and as I said, there's damage. Uh, there's a lot that's going to need to be done. We did not get the worst case scenario, uh, but we did get hit, uh, and we're going to have to work to bounce back. Okay, Kevin Guthrie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your continued leadership. I know we're, uh, you're ready to get moving on the cleanup of Milton, and we're ready to do that for you. Uh, Post-disaster fatalities are preventable. You've heard the governor talk about fatalities. I want to take a minute and just remind everybody, to the point of some of the governor's talkers, we will have volunteer organizations ready to go. We already have them ready to go to come in and help you. 1-833-GET-HOPE. 1-833-GET-HOPE. You can apply. We will match up the, the correct. We, you heard me talk about a couple of days ago, the right resources at the right place at the right time. We want to make sure that we don't send you a volunteer organization that does mass feeding when you need something that needs to be cut off your roof. So we'll get you through, uh, get hope, activate hope, uh, and uh, make sure we get the right one there for you. We are also working with Crisis Cleanup as an extension of Activate Hope to make sure that we're ready to do debris removal, tree removal, mucking and gutting and mold remediation. We have all of those capabilities now, and we need you to go again to the Activate Hope website, 
Hope Florida, or call us at 1-833-GET-HOPE. Before you begin any cleanup, take close-up and far-away photos of what's going on. We need you to do that inside and outside of your home. Roadway, some roadways are still flooded. I know over in the uh, Hillsborough County area, Plant City area, we do have some roads that are still flooded. Please make sure you do not drive through flooded areas. Accidents due to floodwaters are 100% preventable, just like the fatalities related to cleaning up your home are 100% uh, preventable. Six inches of moving water can knock a person over. One foot of moving water can move your vehicle. So please do not do that. Not to mention there could be power lines down inside of that water and also wrapped up in trees. So please, please do not go out in flooded waters. Do not cut things out of trees that have power lines in them. If you have lost power and want to use a generator as a backup, please use it safely. I'm gonna go over the three steps of using a generator safely again. Make sure it's 20 feet away from any open door of your uh, residence, whether that's your garage. Don't put it inside your garage. It's 20 feet away from the garage door, 20 feet away from a front door, back door, 20 feet away from a window. If you have to run, if you run out of fuel and you need to refuel, give the generator 20 minutes to cool down and then refuel it before you restart it. And then always have a carbon monoxide uh, detector inside your home to help prevent the carbon monoxide poisoning. Don't disaster sightsee. We have a lot of people that are out here doing great work. Well over 50,000, probably closer to 60, 65,000 responders, electrical workers, all doing really, really good work right now. But we need you to stay out of our way, just simply put. We don't need you out there sightseeing. We saw it yesterday in Siesta Key, people driving around, videoing and all that. Stay out of the way. We really, really need your cooperation on this. For assistance after the storm, call the State Assistance Information Line at 1-800-342-3557. Again, that's 1-800-342-3557. We have uh, translators in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole waiting for you. As always, our best way to get updates on the web is at floridadisaster.org slash updates uh, for all the information on other organizations helping us out. And then for the most up-to-date, to-the-minute updates is follow us at F-L-S-E-R-T on X and Instagram and on Facebook at F-D-E-M. Again, Melissa, thank you for your partnership and your cooperation in this. General Haas, same thing. Governor, as always, thank you for your leadership. Okay. Good morning, and thank you, Governor, for your leadership, your support, and your decisive actions, enabling a broad and capable response effort. I'm also, uh, I'd also like to thank Dr. Uh, Director Guthrie and his team, as well as our fellow uh, response teammates for their tireless efforts in safeguarding our citizens and state. Uh, the Florida National Guard currently has 9,000 guardsmen activated with 6,500 forward deployed, as the Governor mentioned. Uh, our available force uh, represents the largest National Guard uh, response uh, in Florida. Tremendous response effort. Uh, we're currently conducting uh, uh, ongoing response efforts uh, consisting of search and rescue, ground and air reconnaissance, humanitarian assistance, route clearance, and high wheel vehicle support. And we're beginning the, the phase transition to response efforts, as the governor mentioned. Uh, in coordination with our state and local uh, partners. Our available equipment includes 31 rotary wing aircraft, over 440 tactical vehicles, including 140 high wheel vehicles, and five hard bottom boats. We're currently supporting 23 counties with 192 active missions, including a point of distribution sites with uh, 30 active pod missions. We're grateful for the support of our mobilized state to state National Guard partners which included over 3,500 partners, uh, 19 air, uh, aircraft, and 20 states. Uh, as the governor mentioned, we're transitioning to recovery operations and we'll begin a responsible right-sizing of the force, uh, which will mean uh, redeploying those soldiers back to their states and the recovery operation being a largely a guard, uh, Florida Guard response. Governor, the National Guard is fully mobilized and stands ready to support the citizens in the state of Florida. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. Melissa Sacia, State President for Duke Energy Florida. I first want to start by thanking uh, Governor DeSantis for his unwavering support of our employees and also to Director Guthrie for his support as well. I want to give an update on three primary areas. One, uh, where we stand as far as outages across the state of Florida and here in Pinellas County talk about our restoration and really need to reinforce the safety messages that the governor just uh, shared with all of you. So first, from an outage perspective, Duke Energy Florida serves 35 counties across the state of Florida. We have approximately 850,000 customers off uh, at this time. As of 11 a.m. this morning, we have already restored about 350,000 of those. From a resource perspective, we 16,000 workers into the state of Florida, both pre-storm and over the course of yesterday, and we have additional people arriving today. They are staged around uh, the state, from Bexley Properties in Land Lakes, the Villages, the Brooksville, Tampa Bay Regional Airport, Mannheim, Orlando, and Winter Garden, Ritchie Brother Auctioneers at I-4 and US-27, the Sebring Raceway, Seminole Town Center as well. So here in Pinellas County, where we all stand, uh, we currently have about 400,000 customers off. Pinellas County is our most populated county that we serve. Uh, we have restored about 50,000 customers. Yesterday was a day of damage assessment and the beginning to restore critical customers, hospitals, water treatment plants, shelters, 911 centers. Today, we started full board, 1,000% moving uh, very quickly into restoration. So we will begin to see these numbers quickly uh, decrease, the outage numbers. An important milestone for today on the outage front, we will provide later today a global estimated time of restoration for our customers. We realize that you all need information on when we expect power to be restored. But I am here to tell you, this is not weeks. This is days. So please keep informed by visiting duke-energy.com. If you're signed up for our outage alerts, we'll provide you text message updates as well. But our forces are here. And I want to also talk about the staging areas that we have in Pinellas County. We have them at St. Pete Clearwater Airport. We will have parking of bucket trucks at Countryside Mall. We will also have parking at um, Raymond James. And of course, uh, uh, we also have them, you will see them at our very iconic Tropicana Field uh, that has a bit of a different look these days, but we will have about 800 resources there by the end of today. So we are 100% committed to getting uh, our customers' lives back to order. We know that the first step is power restoration. We take that job seriously and uh, we will continue to do that. But again, this will not be weeks of interruptions to our customers. This will be days. Please look for that estimated time of restoration today. But please, I know people want to get back home, feel like they have some kind of control, clean up their yards. Always, always assume a downed line is energized. It is not Hollywood. It does not always have to arc. It does not have to sizzle. It can be a silent killer that is caught up in debris, trees, bushes, uh, flooded waters, uh, uh, flooded areas, as the governor said. We have seen this too many times where customers inadvertently make contact and it comes to a very tragic end. Please stay safe. It is still a dangerous situation out there. We will be here to restore your power, and of course, we will continue to work with the state of Florida and all of the officials behind them. I want to thank them as well, from the state to our local officials. They have been great partners in this effort. Thank you. And are you, is it your assessment so far that most, that there's not necessarily need for a complete rebuild that's mostly just reconnects? So when you're doing, the, I mean, so they have all the, we have all the people in here, statewide, Duke, TECO, uh, FPL, co-ops, munis, and so that makes it go quicker. But uh, if you have to rebuild the entire infrastructure because it got wiped out so bad, 
that just takes, even if you have everybody there, it just takes longer. If it's more of just re-energizing, you can see it, it done more rapidly. So, so I appreciate This is more linemen were pre-staged for this storm than have ever been uh, done uh, in the history of, of any hurricane response, because I think we're the only state that pre-stages. But, uh, but certainly that, I mean, even Ian, we had over 40,000. That was a lot. We had over 30 for Helene. Uh, but this one was over 50,000 and probably got even in the mid 50s because you guys kept bringing people in when we stopped counting. So I really appreciate it. I, and I know it may, means a lot to people to be able to have the, the least amount of interruption uh, to their lives as possible. And even though these storms do damage, you know, most people, thankfully, don't suffer catastrophic damage from it. So if you get the power and everything working again, that we can kind of get get more people on their feet quicker. So I want to thank everybody that's been involved for that. I mean, I've seen some of these linemen from all over the United, continental United States that have come here uh, to be able to help. And my sense is, with what I saw in Sarasota when I was down there, that you're looking likely with FPL probably more just re-energizing, reconnect, rather than having a complete rebuild. Um, that's just my assessment comparing Ian to comparing what I saw out on the coast uh, of the barrier islands in Sarasota. So if that's the case, yeah, they've already done, you know, 1.6 million uh, and the storm left yesterday afternoon. And so you got 2.4 million as of this morning. And I guarantee you, you're going to have people uh, that are going to uh, get this power throughout the course of the day. So, so thank you for doing that. Okay. Uh, we got a quote. Yes, ma'am. Well, I mean, I think the question is, should there be more regulation or should there just be more common sense? I mean, do we have to regulate everything? I mean, I think most people take the cranes down, right? I know, Kevin, isn't that the standard practice? I don't think we've had to mandate that. Yeah, and so you have building officials, you have other people that are there. And so, you know, it's like, you know, do you have to really kind of like crack down from the state to do it? I would hope not. And I think most of the time in Florida, that is handled uh, very appropriately. Uh, but I think it just takes a little bit of common sense. Well, you always, anytime you're doing stuff, you always have contingency plans for how you, how you have to deal with different things. And I think, Kevin, do you want to speak to this issue? So, you know, the state of Florida, we, we certainly lead the way, and I think you've seen that over the last 72 hours on, on how we respond to disasters. But disasters are at the local level. At the end of the day, Pinellas County's got a plan. St. Pete's got a plan. We need construction workers to have a plan, and you've got to have those contingencies. I mean, it's not like this snuck out from, from anywhere. I mean, we had strong seven to 10 days notice that things were heading in this direction. If you go back and look at the last, the previous seven days prior to landfall, it was constantly being called for the greater Tampa Bay region. So, you know, again, to the, to the governor's point, there's got to be a point where common sense comes into play. We cannot hold everybody's hand and do everything for them. That is not the function of government, whether it's local, county, or the state government, or even the federal government. It's not their job to do that. Again, I think there's common sense that's got to prevail. you got to have contingency plans. You live in the great state of Florida where you know you're going to be the peninsula in the middle of the tropics here. So, again, common sense has got to come in. But, again, those have got to be decisions somewhat governed and, and, and overseen, if you will, at the local level, at the local level by the local building official to say, hey, look, all permitted work has got to be secured. It's got to be done. We do that at the Department of Transportation under the governor's leadership. We don't leave barges out there to run into bridges. we got to have some common sense to this. And I, and I don't buy this idea it takes weeks to mitigate. I don't, I don't accept that at all. Uh, I mean, just think about the stuff that they, would, they said. I mean, they say the, the debris takes six months to a year, and then we got 40,000 40, cubic yards of debris off the Pinellas beaches just by bringing all of our people, pausing road construction, which is also very important for Florida, coming over in this, this rapid 72 hour, and you got rid of 30, over 3,000 truckloads of debris. So, you know, things can be done. You just have to, you know, have the, the wherewithal to want to do it. Yes. Uh, some clarity on what exactly happened with the staging at the TROP. Who was originally staged there and were there still cots inside when the roof was blown off? Kevin can do that. I'll, the only thing I will say is like, Kevin had told me, you know, days before the storm, TROP can only handle 115. 
we're going to watch the track. If it's within a certain mount, we're going to redeploy, and that's exactly what they did. So that was planned for the whole time. So, um, again, as you saw, there was uh, damage at Tropicana Field. There were cots there. I don't know whose cots they were. I can tell you we had 20,000 cots. All 20,000 of our cots went to all of those uh, shelters that we opened. The governor uh, came up again and, and supported us on doing what we call shelters of last resort. All 20,000 of those cots went to those shelters. So I don't know whose cots those were. But at the end of the day, all of those cots were still on the field. Those cots would still, still be used. Whoever they were, we didn't. No, no money was wasted. So again, all of our resources, whether they were um, tangible resources or they were human resources, were taken out of Tropicana Field about 12 to 13 hours before Tropical Storm Force winds uh, set uh, were set here in uh, the Greater St. Pete St. Pete area. And uh, we, we took our resources. I know there's some stuff. They went all the way to Jacksonville. No, they didn't. Portions of that went to Jacksonville. Other portions went to the Perry Foley Airport, where we already had a Helene staging area set up. Other portions went to the Florida Horse Park, where we had another staging area set up. Some of it went to the Lee County Mosquito Control, where we already had stuff set up. So we did a, few, we did a full demobilization of all of the resources, whether they were tangible or human, and that the, the stuff that was there, don't know whose it was, but we got all of our stuff accounted for. The trailers for those who are still recovering, specifically on the beaches in Pinellas County. About getting the mobile travel trailers? Yeah, so that program is active, and that would apply for Helene or for um, uh, Milton. My sense is is that, that I would say 90% of the trailers that are going to be needed are going to be Helene. Uh, just from what I've seen, just having toured the, yesterday and today, uh, well, I was in Siesta Key, which was you know pretty close to ground zero of where the storm did, and most of what I saw, there was damage, but I saw mostly the debris from Helene was there, and I talked to some guys who owned some hotels uh, 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 out there, and they said that, that Helene was much worse for them than this was. So my sense would be that there may be additional need for trailers as a result of this, but I still think the bulk of them are going to be from Helene. So you can get, you can request a travel trailer through Hope Florida, 1833 Get Hope, 1833 Get Hope. And you can talk about putting, putting these trailers, uh, particularly, I think the trailers are good if you are going to rehab your property uh, and you're going to be the one kind of doing it or overseeing the contractors and you want to be involved because then you're there. Uh, if people don't want to do that, you can still apply for travel trailer, but we are now, are we approved for TSA for Helene only? Right now, only, uh, we're only approved for NCS, but I think we're going to see Okay, so we are going to have temporary sheltering assistance available as well, and that's going to be for both, and Kevin's working with the feds to do that. But what that will allow you to do is be able to stay in a hotel for a, what are, what are we having now, six months, eight their initial uh, rollout is 60 days, but we can do that for now up to 12 months. So yeah, so so you're guaranteed 60 days. We likely would be able to get that extended uh, up to 12 months. And, um, you know, it's an, in, it's, a, it's an issue with there's going to be a need to do repairs. I mean, we you look at, like, Madeira Beach, some of these places in Pinellas, you have three, four feet of water. you got to muck and gut that. Now, you can repair that. But you also have a lot of people that are doing the same thing. So how many contractors are available? Are the supplies available? We're doing stuff um, with, with Home Depot and, and Lowe's uh, and Ace Hardware to, to, to bulk purchase supplies so people can have the supplies to do it. But the reality is, is uh, there's going to, because it's such a populated area, um, it's a little bit different than maybe like Horseshoe Beach, which had a lot of damage, but it's just a more sparsely populated area. So that'd be a challenge. That's one of the reasons why if we need to in January with this port stoppage, I know they tried to do it earlier, we will have our National Guard and I'll mobilize whatever state resources at our ports to make sure supplies keep coming in to the state of Florida. This stuff is not going to be going to uh, people aren't going to be able to rehab their homes, you know, overnight. It's going to take time and hopefully you can get it done as quickly as possible. Uh, but the idea that you can just pick up a phone and like there's a, a surplus of contractors that are available right now. I don't think that that's likely the case. Now, fortunately, Hope Florida, what Kevin's been able to do, bring these groups to the table. They are able like Team Rubicon. We had Rubicon out uh, in, in uh, where were we at with Rubicon? 
Yeah, we had them out in Pasco. They will take these supplies and they will help you uh, repair your homes. So take advantage of that. It's a, it's a great service. Cities have been hit twice very hard in two weeks. Climate change, habitat change, increasing the threat. I know it's a difficult conversation, but has there been a discussion about not letting some people rebuild? So people, ha their property, they have a right to do with what they want to do with it. And um, it is tough when you have two back-to-back -back storms, no question. But I will tell you this, um, keep in mind also the people in North Florida, they got hit with Idalia in 2023, 13, and so they had damage. So they spent all this time rebuilding and then they get hit a year later and that wipes away. So, so that is really bad too. So, so yes, these are things are very tough. What I see is people have a lot of resilience. I know there's people who are, who are interested in, and when we had Hurricane Ian, people were like, oh man, and that was, that probably was the, the most significant storm that we've had. I mean, Michael was stronger, but Ian was so big. I think the total damage was probably more on that. And a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, are people going to want to live in Southwest Florida? And like within two weeks, you had like people buying up homes. I mean, people wanted to get down there. So I think that there's there's always going to be a demand to live in a beautiful part of the world there. And I, maybe I took it for granted growing up around here, but that you can go all across this country and not find beaches better than what you have uh, right here in Pinellas County. Uh, the reality is, is people work their whole lives to be able uh, and work hard to be able to live in environments uh, that are really, really nice. And they have a right to make those decisions with their property uh, as they see fit. It is not the role of government uh, to forbid them or to force them to dispose or utilize their property in a way that they do not think is best for them. All right. Love you, too. All right. We'll be back, guys. Thank you. We'll see you.